first thing I want to do is evaluate. You're 18 years old with this back pain. It doesn't make sense to me, okay? Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't make sense to you either. Let's get an overall presentation of his posture. Take a step forward, please. And let's just look at some of the things we see here. So we're looking at symmetry. You can see it is puffy here around L4, L5. Down low, I can see the dimples decent. I can see this dimple more than this side. I can see he's kind of twisting as well. It's going like this. There's a kink in here, and then it shoots off to the right side. Right side is more pronounced coming back. When we look at the sides here, you can see this too. These lines are different. We want that symmetrical V, okay? So we can see slight imbalance. We can see the pelvis is off. Look, I'm just gonna put my hands like, like this, and you can see it's doing this. It's going this way, correct? Does that feel about right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we'll evaluate the gait in a second. Let's follow this up. It is more pronounced here. Looking at the inferior angles, they're decent, maybe slightly higher on the right, but not so significant. The main thing I'm seeing is this, guys. I have to open this up because I want to show this, the handles on the side. You can see this handle looks more here than here. Let's take another step forward, please. Okay, you can see this here and this here. It's like, this is his body like this. Okay, I'll make fun of you later. Great. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and walk straight line back and forth, please, several times. As you're walking, swinging the arms, please. Regular walking. So folks know you're here? Yes, they what, do. What'd they say? Uh, I'm little, curious. Yeah, a little uh, skeptical at first. At first? Yeah. What changed the mind? I think me caring about it so much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, you can see what's happening now. Okay, walk on your heels, please. Regular walking, slow it down a little bit. So you can see he kind of shit goes just side to side in his walk. We're not getting, stop with this. When we're looking at the dimples here, we wanna see good movement through the dimples this way, okay? I don't really see that movement. Let's watch here, walk slowly away from us, please. So it rides up high on that right side. This is your walk, I'm making fun, but this is what it is. Okay, you're starting off here. As you're walking, this is going like this, like this. That right is stuck, it wants to ride up high. Keep going, please. Keep going. You can see it just keeps wanting to shift up on the right. But here's what's interesting, with that being stuck, your right foot arches better than your left. Your left foot externally rotates and then it pronates in. You're a left shooter or right shooter? Left, predominantly. Oh, okay. So right is your posting leg, right? Yeah. You post with your right. Yeah. Uh, you've had some good ankle sprains, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're probably gonna need to work on that as well. Whatever we find, we, we'll work on, okay? Now, watch here. Walk on your toes. Let's see if anything changes in the mechanics here. Walk on your toes, please. So what's interesting, when you walk on your toes, it, it's, it looks better. Oh, really? Interesting. Can walk on your heels. Now you see the shift, L4. L so walking on your heels, L4, L5. Walking on your toes, L5, S1. Walking on your toes, back looks better than walking on your heels. Huh. I see a nice shift at that L4. Okay, now let's march in place. So you can see it goes down this way, down this way. He's very rigid through here, okay, very stiff. What are you doing right now for activity? Are you at least getting your walks in? Yeah, I started walking and just doing the rehab and like more cool. Okay. So you see every time he steps down on the left, his whole body wants to go to that side. And then when he steps right, it's shifting out lateral this way. Watch his feet. Now, I want you to close your eyes. I'm right here. Close your eyes. Keep marching. Let's see what changes. As soon as you close your eyes, we're activating that upper cervical mechanism. And you can see as he's kind of starting to walk away. So there's two components. Open your eyes. See where you're at. 
So there's two components. There's an upper cervical component, there's a foundation component. Now, foundation could be sacrum or pelvis. L4 is an issue. That area there is a kink there. Yeah. Come over here, please. Have a seat. Um, L4, when you're walking on your heels, you got a big side shift. That's right stuck at that L4. But that's not where we're going to start. Okay? When you're up on your toes, you're activating 105 S1 sacrum. And when you're doing the sacrum, when you're activating it, the L4 looks better. So we're going to go to your x ray. Let's see what we got going on over there. I'm going to start putting everything together for you. This is looking at you from behind. This is the back profile. This is right. This is right. This is left. Yeah. yeah. And then this is your side profile. Uh, first thing we're going to do is let's look at your AP this profile and let's see what we have and we're going to start out general and then we'll go through the numbers and everything else as well yeah okay so overall appearance what do we see here what do we got going on here so i talk a lot about this in terms of this work and this work is based on the the work of dr gonstick yeah and the way we're looking at, at the human body and the, and the frame is I want you to think of this as a 24-story building. We have 24 bones and 23 discs in between. We have the foundation of this building, which is the pelvis and the sacrum. Yeah. So the first thing we want to do is let's go deep into the pelvis and sacrum and let's just get a general appearance of what's happening. Okay, so this is your foundation. And the first thing we want to see is are we symmetrical? Okay, I'm, I'm not asking you to tell me. We should be able to see if something just doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to look at. Are we symmetrical left to right side? Does this hole look the same as this hole? No. Slightly off a little bit, yeah. right? Let's look at the hip sockets. Do the hip sockets look the same? So when we look here and we look here, it's this whitening you see on both sides, right? Yeah. The whitening, it's called enuberation. It just means that that bone is thickened based on the forces applied to it. Wolf's law. Bone will grow according to the demand placed on it. But if we look a little closer, this looks a little more symmetrical. This looks a little jaggedy on the white part, right? Yeah. But then it also, here, it seems like there's a little more space here than there is on the left side to me. Yeah, I see. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's look at the, we know good positioning. People often ask, how do you know the positioning of the x-ray is correct? This is the lesser trochanter. This is part of the femur bone. And when we're looking at it, they should be symmetrical. That means your positioning was correct. I'm just pointing out different things that people ask and hopefully is good information for you to now let's go to your SI joints. This is your left SI, this is your right. Let's zoom in a little bit. And then we're gonna talk about the sacrum. So we should see a smooth symmetrical joint space. We can see it through there, right? Mm -hmm. What about here? Fades away. Fades away, little yeah. scar tissue or something's a little, it's like, it's crunchier, so to speak, mm -hmm. grindier. Yeah. Um, the question is, is this swollen? or is this your normal, and this is the one that's the issue. We'll find it on you. I did say I see you right up on that right side. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, did we injure this hip first, and this has been compensating, and over the, due to the compensation and altered mechanics, we're getting some altered grinding in the joint there, okay? That's a possibility. The other possibility is this was the old injury and this has been compensating and this became the problem. We'll know when we find it on you. Let's look at your tailbone and this is really important. You're 18. Yeah. Okay, here's the good news about that. The sacrum doesn't ossify or completely form until about 32, 33. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it because it's important in your case. I want you to see this. You can see the bend in your sacrum. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, you can. Okay. So that thing is kind of talking to me right there, that bone right there. And then it does this. It goes this, and then it's a kink right there. This is L5, S1, S2, S3, S3 or S4. 
okay? There's a, there's a good thing. And look, this is what I want you to see. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, here's what I want you to see. It's kinking. Yeah. It's kinking like this, and then it comes to this side. And then your L5, the L5 goes with it, right? Yeah. It's higher on this side. And then what does L4 do? It Compensates. Back, yeah. Okay, but now let's look at here. This is your side profile. There's a lot of other stuff I want to go over, but I want to show you this. You see that nub right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, this should be a smooth arc. And one was that that lucency we saw, we were down here in the coccyx, but more importantly, we have these two nubs and a little bit here. You had some good falls. I mean, you play hard. I'm not telling yeah. you to stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm just pointing this out for you because mm -hmm. this is probably where we're gonna start, okay. around the sacrum. Now, we'll come back to this x-ray. Let's go back to the AP. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay. All right, so let's continue. All right, so we know there's something going on in the sacrum. We can see L5 starts to tilt on that side going with it. L4 does what? Comes back to level, right? Mm -hmm. But the crazy part, when you look on the side, L4 looks like the bad one. L4 is a compensation. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go. Yeah. There's another thing that I'm a little confused about here. Let's change the contrast because you're too young for this, dude. You see this here? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Almost looks like a ligament. That's. It almost looks like the body's trying to calcify this area. You have a lot of instability in this part of the body. That's five, four, three, two. L two, L three. What did they tell you? L two, L three. L two, L three is not the problem. L two, L three is a compensation. So you're starting to get calcification here. You're eighteen. You're starting to get a hook. The body's trying to stabilize. And I want to talk about, do they do an MRI? Yes. Okay, let's talk about an MRI real quick. It's kind of important. All right, so you were told L2, L3 based on an MRI. You were yeah. lying down for the MRI. Yes. Okay, yes. here's the issue I'm having with a lot of MRIs. MRIs are fantastic for uh, soft tissue, for trauma, for you know any serious things, fractures, or do CT. But when we're evaluating the disc, the disc is in the spine. The spine is a weight-bearing structure. Mm -hmm. And the way I was taught is whenever we're imaging a weight-bearing structure, we should always image it weight-bearing. Yeah. Now why? Spine, synchronous, contiguous, 24 bones. Everything works together. Now, they've already quantified the movement in the spine. What do I mean? There's a book, it's called Clinical Biomechanics of the Spine, it's what we trained in. Studying the mechanics, the authors were White and Punjabi. They're the authorities on biomechanics. Okay. There's a concept in there we talk about is global motion and intersegmental motion, which means what? Intersegmental motion is each bone will move a certain amount. We know that the lumbar spine, each bone moves a certain amount in flexion, extension, side bending, and rotation, and all the way up. Now, if I say, you know, go ahead and just touch your toes, bend forward. That's global motion of the entire spine. Each bone has to make up that motion, right? Mm -hmm. So intersegmentally is motion creating a global motion. Okay. Now, let's say one segment is stuck. Yeah. Two, three, four segments become hypermobile. They move more to compensate to create the same movement, global movement. I put that person on the back, the stuck joint over the hypermobile segment moves, and it appears as a false positive. It is very common, I'm just discussing mechanics, okay? So when I'm talking about, now, we do use an MRI facility local, it's seated, You're, it's way better. Yeah. There's not a lot out there. So there is something at L2, L3, but it looks like there's calcification going on there due to instability down low. Okay, sir? Yep. Can I continue? Yep, keep going. Cool. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 12, 11, 10, 9. These discs are all good, but you can see all this stuff happening. Yeah. You can see concavities on the sides of the vertebrae. 
it just tells me you play hard, okay? We will need to talk about your digestion later as well. Your digestion's off, I know it is. How do I know it is? Two reasons. Number one, this air bubble, mm -hmm. and especially for your age, mm -hmm. this should be a big half black circle called the Megan Blasi, number one. Number two, is when we look over here, you have a lot of gas and undigested food on the right side of the colon, which is the ascending colon. Mm -hmm. That's where we absorb and assimilate. So by the time it comes across transverse in here, it's not coming through absorbed. So you're, you're, okay. you're not getting the value out of the food that you're eating. Hopefully that's gonna change in a couple of visits with, with us here, okay? I'm just pointing that stuff out. I know you're not here for that, but it's important. And then what are we going? This is what's interesting. You watch videos of me talking about neurological control of digestion around T6, T5, T six, seven yeah, area. Yeah. Okay, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six. That's your kink. This is your, this is digestion. This is heart and lung. This is breathing and circulation. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you get some exertional issues as well. Yeah. You didn't tell me this, did you? I did not. Okay. Way to put me out there like that. Appreciate it. Put me on blast like that. Why? No, it's good. All right. Like, tell me. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you. So you see this, right? And then from here, what happens? Right at the neck level, yeah. here we start to, the tilting is fine, your atlas is fine, but your jaw is off. You got stuck good in the jaw too. Jaw? Yeah, TMJ, right side, boom. You got stuck there, good. Oh, okay. I got hit in the nose too at the same time, I think. Except, uh, yeah. Is my good. nose off? A little bit, but it's not so bad. We'll, that's not a primary, no, no. we'll deal with that, yeah. all that. But the jaw is that's something we'll deal with down the road as well. Okay. okay, because the right one goes that way, the left one compensates. And it'll be important down the road. Okay, we want to deal with that. Make sense? Yeah. All right, side profile. What we're looking at in the side profile is, we're looking at your overall posture first. We're designed to have 60 degree reciprocating curves. 60, 60, 60. First thing I need you to see is your posture. Have you in all these fantastic places you've been and evaluated had a postural assessment? No. <laughs> okay. Trying to keep it in? Let's do it. Nah, I'm good. Okay, a posture assessment typically done is they do what's called a plumb line. You may have had it done. It's a weighted string. You stand up like this and they have a weighted string where the ear they match the ear the ear should match the shoulder the hip the knee the ankle that's optimal alignment okay on the x-ray we do this for the posture assessment take a plumb line lowest lumbar body rotation bisect it it should be bisecting through what c2 and c7 so it should be here it's off I'm gonna explain why it's significant. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, it's off. Okay, now, so it tells us what? You carry your upper body behind your foundation. So what are those muscles up top doing? Trying to pull it back. It's working off balance. Yeah. So you're twisting, striking. You're not getting full power. I already know why. Yeah. Another piece of knowledge I want to share with you. Locomotion in the spine. Mm -hmm. Where, the power, the motor, where does that come from? And most people don't know this. It's really cool information. So I say, where's the, where's the locomotive power? In your car, you have an engine that spins. Yeah. Where is it in the body? Uh, your structure. Okay, where? The sacrum hips. So pretty good, not bad. Um, locomotion comes from lateral bending of the lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. So this is the movement pattern. It's called a coupled pattern. Yeah. You bend, side bend or lateral bend lumbar spine, ipsilateral coupled motion rotation. Mm -hmm. So the power locomotion comes from this. Bend, forward, bend, forward, bend. Mm -hmm. This is our locomotion, okay? And as we're going through this locomotion this way, that's how we get our power. Now think about it. If the spine is stuck and you don't get to bend one way versus the other, what do you think is gonna happen? You're either gonna have a short leg, short strike, or uneven power. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right.
All right. That's a lot of information, dude. Yep. We got more? I mean, we're going to start. Well, that's a good start. Okay. You want to get started, I know. I always like to explain all this. Yeah. Um, and why? Because you need to know this. It's yeah. your body. But we got to keep going. And here's the good news. Okay, so starting here, we said we're gonna deal with this here. Your L5 disc is decent, it is posterior slightly, yes. There is a lot of scar tissue back here, but disc is good. L4 looks bad, it's tilting back. Okay. But here's what I want to see, here's another answer, okay? It's, you have this little stair-stepping effect. So if you look at the back of five, it's slightly behind the sacrum. If you look at four, slightly behind five. If you look mm -hmm. at three, slightly behind uh -huh. two. Yeah. If you look at one, it's a we call that the stair-stepping effect. Mm -hmm. The answer is not here. If there's a stair-step and each, each segment above is posterior to the one below and it continues, we have to do what? We have to go down low. So I'm just showing you this so that you understand that it's not your L2 as your start. Okay. okay. Discs are all good here. Old compression, discs are good. Discs are good. Nice level disc, nice level disc. This one is swollen a little bit. Yeah. Question is, that's around 6.7 by the way, T67. Let's look at the neck. Discs are fantastic. Great discs. I'm happy with them. We just need to fix that curve a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see right now. Let's do the flexion extension of the neck. And let's see which one doesn't move. Okay. This is extension. They should all be moving back. Mm -hmm. This is flexion. Which one didn't move forward? This one. You see these two didn't move forward. These all move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the culprit is probably down here for the fix, okay? okay? This is an old whiplash injury, whatever it was, or maybe it was one of your hits, whatever. The good news is that you have your, your district that, okay. Shall we continue? Yeah. Have a seat over there. And let's start the exam. We're gonna start by scoping you, starting at the base of the neck. Head down just a little bit, sir, thank you. And the first thing we're getting is 10 points, C6. Yeah, maybe more. 10 points, C6. Up top is clear. Yep, C6, 10 points. Nine points, T6, left side. All right. So you already did all these tests at home with your roommate, you said, right? So you, <laughs> yeah. already, you already know. The only thing I, I don't think you were able to, you got a scope? No, I should have run. <laughs> <laughs> what are you studying at CSUN? I'm undeclared right now. I was just my first freshman. What are you trying to get into? Not sure yet, honestly. There it is. Watch this. It looks like it's up there. It's 15 points, S3, S4. Yes, sir. It's very distinct right there. S3, S4, T6, C6. Those are the three spots I'm getting, okay? okay. Scoot forward a little bit. Let's check movement in the pelvis, feet together. Open and close the knees, open and close. Open wide, close. Left side only. Not too bad, right side only. Left pelvis is fine, right, do the left side again. There's a tiny bit there, but we're gonna talk about, we're gonna start on the sacrum and I'll tell you why, okay? Scoot back for me, please. So in the, in the Gonstead work, when we have a rotated sacrum, ASIN, a rotated sacrum with an ASIN on the same side, the book and the mechanics tells us do the sacrum first, okay? okay. 
So that's where we're gonna start. Come back slowly towards me. Okay, that's your L5, sir. That's your L4. That's your L3. Okay, that's the L2. Tender? Yeah. That's tender, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go back down here. Tender? Yeah. That's L5, let's go lower, S1. Yeah. Let's go one more, S2. Let's go one more, and that's the one right there. On the, yeah. more tender on the left side, right there. Yeah. More tender on the right, no. Left, left, left side. Because then my leg, left side. That went down your leg when I did that? I felt it, yeah. Let's do that one more time. S3, left side. Yes? Yeah. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Starting at seven. Yeah. Seven, S3, let's check the neck. All the way back. Good. Seven, six, six. Okay, so C6, T6, S3. We'll start on T6 and S3 on this table. Have you walk, and then we'll do the neck. Okay. And we'll see if we need to do anything else. Okay. All good, you ready? I'm ready. Come on. <laughs> Showtime. So Dad loves his soccer. Slide up. Yeah, he does. Did he play uh, college, professional, anything? College, yeah. Same position like you? Oh, no, no. He's a defender. No. Uh, so you guys are yin and yang, right? One is yeah. offense, one is defense. <laughs> Relax the shoulders down, sir. I want you to focus on your breathing, okay? Deep breath in. That's one, two, three. Now, there's a slight, there was a slight Slight short leg on the left, very slight. Why I'm saying that is I'm gonna to torque the sacrum this way, clockwise, just to get a little lift for you, okay? Okay. Home run, oh, gotcha. That was it, sir. That was crazy. Now, let's do one, two, three, six, seven, number seven. Gotcha. That was it, sir. Wow. Okay. Come off the table, please. Hold my hand. And let's walk a straight line back and forth. And the first question I'm going to ask you is, what was different about that adjustment for you? You've um, had adjustments before. Yeah. I don't think it's never been that low, first of all. Okay. And as deep as it was, I felt it like, yeah, I felt, felt like you broke like layers, like you went deep inside. I set layers. I didn't break any. Yeah, no, never mind. You okay. didn't break it. Now, as you're walking, check it out. Got a little more movement going on. Knees up high when you walk, please. Knees up higher. There you go. Regular walking now. Tell me what's different in your walk right now as you're walking. I feel more loose for sure on the my tailbone, tailbone. like my hips kind of too. Okay. Come back over here, please, and let's continue on C6. I want to really show the contact for C6 and the lift of C6. So the contact is the distal palmar surface of the index finger. Flex the patient's head forward and you wanna get right underneath there like this and hook C6. And the reason, part of the thing with the cervical is you wanna to, to lift it, you wanna lift it, right? It's like turning on the light switch and it's very subtle. So it's not just jab it like this, okay? I wasn't trying to jab it, by the way. It's come underneath it and lift up, look up and set up. So you're lifting it up. 
How's that? Good. Yeah. Nice. Oof. Walk it off, please. That's a set, okay? That's the difference between setting a bone and just cracking and making sound. Yeah. I like I'm moving more insane, kind of more straight. Have a seat over here, let's re-scope and let's feel that L2. Okay. Let's see if anything's different, okay? <laughs> Starting at the base of the neck. Six is clear. So C6 was clear, T7 is clear. Now we'll probably get a little muscle activity going on because things have been out of balance for so long, for a while. Nope, clear. Now let's feel, back towards me. S1, S2, that's the one. Anything shooting down the lid? Now let's go back up. Five, four, different? Yeah. Let's go up to three. Three, different? Yes. Here's your culprit, you said. That was two. <laughs> Don't feel anything. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Okay. Do you see that now? Yeah. Okay. All clear, sir. Let's go on your back and then to work on your knee. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna ask one more thing about this toe. What about it? I've, I've broken it or fractured it like two times. Okay. And so at the end, of, like this one, I can bend the end of it. Like, yeah. But I, I can't bend this one. It's like the sharpest pain if I even bend like How long? a little bit. How many years? Four, four years. Anytime I go to the doctor, I always have to tell them, please don't touch that toe. Okay, let's see. So you're telling me about the toe, right? Yeah. yeah. Tender there? Yeah, yeah. So you can't bend it, you said? It's stuck, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Come check this out. Let's see what we let's see what we can do. Let's look at his big toes. So we can bend this. All good. Not a lot of, it's bending up here, but there's no bend here. Yeah. We're gonna, there's, whenever we're working on the feet, 26, 28 bones in the foot, six major misalignments that occur with a sprained ankle. 85% of all foot problems we deal with starts with a talus misalignment. So while you broke this, you don't think you twisted this? You did. Right. So we're gonna work on your ankle, okay? Now between the two, I'm gonna work on your right ankle today, more importantly. Yeah. I'm gonna start with some lotion. We need to break up some scar tissue and swelling, okay? okay? And you take it as much as you can. If you can't deal with it, you let me know. All right. Now, we're just working all the periarticular swelling and scar tissue back in. You feel what I'm doing here? Yeah. Anything is too sharp, like I said, please let me know. Oh yeah. So, the idea with this is break up scar tissue, equalize some of that pressure, work that swelling back. There, five, four, three, two, one. Slide down a little bit, please. Actually, slide up. Sorry, slide up. There we go. Now, passive range of motion. Are you okay with me doing this? Yeah. What's interesting, I'm on your big toe too, right? Yeah. You're okay with this? Yeah. Okay. Talus. Tender? Yeah. Yeah. Talus. AS talus, medial tilt, posterior fib, and inferior navicular. Those are the three we're going to start with. AS talus, medial tilt. Slide up, please, slide up. Use your hand on or elbow to hold on to that part of the chair like this, okay? okay. Try not to focus down on the ankle. Focus on your hand up there. There you go, gotcha. Nice. Slide up headward a little more. Here's your right leg. 
AS talus, a little more. Posterior fifth. Turn to your right side. The board is a little dramatic, I get it. Bend the top knee, please. Bend the bottom forward. There you go. Check it out. Watch this. Navicular. Bend the toe. Heck. Check it out. Oh, what the? Go on your back. <laughs> Check it out. I've been able to do that. You're well, right? Yeah. Look. Wow. You're getting some bent. You're able to do that, right? Yeah. It's not killing you, right? No. Oh. Cool. Dropped fourth. That's fine. Stand up and walk on it now, dude. And then tell us what's different. See how that foot is. The bonus bunion. <laughs> yeah, wow. Way more stable. I feel like I'm using all of my foot to... Walk on your toes now. Check it out. Now if you watch his feet, he actually has a bend in his big toe. Right? Yeah. Check this out. Walk on your heels. Should be more stable. Because you can actually bend that toe just a tiny bit. Yeah. Right? It's not fixated. You can get a little bit of a bend in there. Mm -hmm. Open all the way. Open. 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 Yeah, that's what I was talking about. You can see the deviation there. You feel that? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Close. Slowly open. Right side. Okay. Let's start working on that. Open all the way, open, 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 slowly close. There. Okay. I'm gonna have a seat over here, please. And I'm gonna get a little buff and polish, break up some scar tissue. Just going over it lightly, okay? Now, your homework with me is simple. You've heard me talk about it. Water walking ice, that's it. No weights, no resistance bands, walking, biking, swimming. There's no gym right now, so hiking would be great. You got some place to hike up there? Yeah. yeah. things it was completely different yeah. uh, we're going to evaluate you I'll see you a few more times over the next two weeks yeah. we'll spread it out enough so that we can kind of see how we're going to schedule you down the road if we need to yeah okay welcome to the office thank you so much